Hello everyone and welcome back to Destiny. Hopefully a lot of you have had a chance to jump into the 2.0 update and play around with some of the new systems. Of course these systems are going to be a lot more useful next week once Forsaken is released. Now while I do believe that Forsaken will be worth its price tag and value, we the hobbyist player base have consistently shown that we can jam through content pretty quickly. Now the issue with the Taken King a couple years ago was that Bungie didn't have a solid plan for the rest of Destiny 1's second year, so we were all done by I say December, and then we were really mad afterwards. This time around, Bungie has decided to take a leap and commit to a full year of content following Forsaken. And of course, I am referring to the Annual Pass, the controversial release that is going to be $30 on top of the $40 you're already paying for Forsaken. But I really do strongly believe that this is going to be worth your price tag, especially if you're a hobbyist player. Now, I think a lot of the disdain is from a confusion of what you're actually getting. So today, with the help of Bungie, we're going to be breaking down everything you're getting for $30, and it ain't so bad. Let's get into it. All right, so let's just get into it. Bungie released a really nice Vidoc on Tuesday, which gave us a good sense of what their philosophies and goals are with the three releases in the annual pass. They also showed us all of the free content that's coming to all players of Destiny, regardless of which expansions you do or do not own. And they supply this really great roadmap graphic. So first, let's touch on the launch window from this graphic. First up, we have the 2.0 update and the preload, which happened earlier this week. Next, we see them highlight a free Gambit Day, which is going to be taking place tomorrow. And that is Saturday the 1st, starting at 10 a.m. Pacific for 24 hours. Also, if you happen to be a PS Plus member, you can download Destiny for free. That's right. The PS Plus game of the month for September is Destiny 2, so you can go ahead and download it for free. Next, we have the actual Forsaken launch on the 4th. 10 days after that is going to be the launch of the raid Last Wish, which several of the developers have assured us that despite the 10 day gap, it's still going to be quite the process to get yourself raid ready. So you can expect the raid to be somewhere north of 500 power. Then we have Iron Banner coming the following reset and some Crucible stuff the one after that. But the thing I want to zone in on is the return of a very infamous event from Destiny 1, and that is Festival of the Lost. Now I could probably do a full 10 minute video on my thoughts on this, but we'll save that for a different video. But what I will say is that I believe that this has the potential to be just as good as Sources of Heroes if they do it right. But anyways, moving on, let's talk about December. We have the launch of Season 5, Season of the Forge, which is paired up with the first annual pass expansion, Black Armory. And this definitely sounds pretty exciting. So starting off with the Season of the Forge, we have the return of Heavy Machine Guns. We can see what is unmistakably the Thunderlord being reloaded here by the Guardian inside of the Vidoc. I'm glad that this weapon class is making a return. The weapon slots changing around definitely leaves a lot of room in the heavy slot for this weapon to come back. And I'll have more on that in just a moment. But the next line item is gameplay updates. I'm not really sure what this might be referring to. We might be getting some kind of restructuring or some new activities of some kind, maybe a heroic version of Gambit or something like that. It could also be just another sandbox pass, maybe even exotic armor catalysts. That would be pretty cool. But the interesting thing to note is that it does not appear in the descriptions of any of the other seasons as we'll see here in a moment. So I'm not really exactly sure what this might be referring to. Now, besides that, we also have a list of things that is going to appear in every single season, and that is new weapons, and I believe that this is referring to things like faction events and Iron Banner, new Crucible content. This was already announced to be sort of divorced from the actual annual pass. All Crucible updates will be free from now on. We have Iron Banner and seasonal ranks. Now, the next interesting thing in December is that it's going to feature the return of the Dawning. And just like with what I said about Festival of the Lost, I think Bungie really has learned their lessons in regards to live events, and hopefully it will feel more like it did in Destiny 1. And to that point, I think Bungie has a golden opportunity here. We were talking about heavy machine guns before. If those of you who were there during the first dawning in D1 remember, that event also introduced us to the sister weapons to the Thunderlord, the Abaddon, and the Nova Mortis. I don't think this is a coincidence that this is when heavy machine guns are making a return. I think that the dawning will at least, or should definitely at least, feature three quests to acquire these three exotic heavy machine guns. 
machine guns. I think it would be perfect, and it would be available to all players since it is a seasonal event. I think that would be a golden opportunity for Bungie to sort of make things right since last year's dawning, and it would more than make up for it. But anyways, Season 5 will be complemented with the first annual pass release, Black Armory. A running theme you'll notice is that these expansions all center around endgame activities and not necessarily a story campaign. Although each release will include more lore to collect through things like scannables and weapon lore tabs, etc. So there is still a bit of a story here to pull things together and to give them context, but we're going to be staying away from story missions, which I'm totally okay with. Now for Black Armory, they're introducing a couple major things. First off is the new raid layer, and then we're going to have access to something called the Black Armory, and then we have a brand new activity, Forge of the Chain. The Black Armory itself was described as a vault containing weapons forged by some of the best craftsmen during the Golden Age, so the best of the best. And I believe this is going to pair really well with this new endgame activity, which I believe is how you're going to be getting these weapons, and that again is called Forge of the Chain. We have literally no information on this activity, but my money is on some kind of multi-wave, multi-round survival type mode. I expect something in the realm of maybe like Court of Oryx meets Archon's Forge meets Escalation Protocol, stuff in that sort of vein. You know, stuff that's like super replayable. Now, of course, the thing that will keep it replayable is going to be the rewards. And here, I think Bungie has a really great opportunity to deliver on what we wanted with Forge and Curse of Osiris. One of the biggest community requests out there is to bring the Curse of Osiris Forge weapons into your two with random rolls. Let us grind that out endlessly. It would be really easy for them to do that, like maybe make three available each week and have us grind them out to forge them into new versions of that gun. I really don't think that's going to happen. I think they want to keep year one sort of inside of year one, but I do strongly believe that this is their response to that feedback. I think the reusing of the word forge is no coincidence. I believe we'll be acquiring a blueprint or even better, maybe a rare quality version of a weapon and we'll have to grind it out to either get more materials or like Souls of Heroes, just kind of build in those quests to help us evolve it into legendaries. That would be pretty awesome. Now, I glossed over this before, but we're going to be getting a raid layer, and you'll see this in a moment, but only the first and third expansions are going to have raid layers, so there's only two, not three like we were originally thinking there would be. And honestly, I'm okay with that, as long as the raids are substantial enough, and as long as they have their own gosh darn loot. That is another huge feedback point from the community, so hopefully Bungie has heard that loud and clear. So anyways, that's December. Now let's move into spring, and we have the start of the next season, Season 6, Season of the Drifter. Sadly, not a lot of info on that right now, other than the usual core updates that we went over before. We don't even know the event that's coming, and no, I don't think it's SRL. I'll be touching on that a little bit later. But let's move over to the complementing expansion titled Joker's Wild. This is going to be the second major content drop inside of the annual pass, and it's going to be focusing on the Drifter and on Gambit. The Drifter is the vendor and officiator for Gambit, and apparently we're going to be getting a lot more lore onto the character, what he's all about, where he comes from, and what is inside that giant rock that he's towing around. Now, this expansion doesn't include a raid layer, but it does include a new activity experience. Now, what I'm hoping this is, is something in scale as to maybe something like the Prison of Elders. I would love a three-man match made endgame activity. That would be pretty awesome. Except for this, I hope it's not just the Prison of Elders redone. I hope it is completely revamped, and I would love it to actually be replayable. But of course, we don't have any information right now, so we'll just have to wait and see. Now, the next line item there is Gambit Evolve. So this could be many things, but I highly doubt it's just a heroic version of that activity. I think that the Gambit team might be cooking up a completely new hybrid experience to really change it up. One thing I mentioned immediately after after Gambit was revealed was that it reminded me a lot of a couple maps from Heroes of the Storm. As far as I'm concerned, MOBAs are a hotbed of interesting ideas and concepts for Destiny. Maybe Gambit will evolve to include a second or even third version that have different objectives and different mechanics. That would be pretty interesting. And not to mention, it would continue to make Destiny a very unique game as far as what it can offer in the hybrid of PvE and PvP. If it's significant enough, then not having a raid layer is not going to be that big of a deal. But anyways, moving on to the summer, we have Season 6, Season of the Redacted. 
Again, not a lot of information here other than the fact that it exists. I kind of hope that Redacted is the actual title because it would really play beautifully with their concept for the actual expansion called Penumbra. So first up for Penumbra, we have the second raid layer, which I believe is going to be taking place in the Dreaming City, just like the other raid layer is most likely going to be. I strongly believe that all the raid layers are going to stay within the Dreaming City since it is the sort of core end game destination. That would only make sense. Just open up a new door or something like that. And it being in the Dreaming City is an important distinction because of this update's new activity experience. It looks like we're going back to Leviathan. The design of the setting is unmistakable. I mean, they're showing us concept art of Leviathan for crying out sakes. Now, I'm totally okay with this because, remember, we're going to have a year away from Leviathan, so I'm okay to go back there after a year in the Reef, especially considering what this expansion is setting up to be. So, their idea for Penumbra was inspired by the community's reaction to finding the Whisper Quest. It was something that the community discovered all by ourselves and came together to figure it all out, or at least T-Rex figured it out. So Bungie is leaning hard into that by basing the entire expansion on that kind of experience. So you can probably expect everything to be hidden. Imagine setting boots down on the Leviathan spawning bridge, and that's it. No map, no waypoint, no missions, nothing to pick up, and hopefully, please, no hints from Bungie. Go find everything and figure it all out all by yourselves. That's gonna be absolutely insane. Imagine stumbling upon a switch that only shows up if you have a certain item in your inventory, and then that activates a plate somewhere different. I love that Chris Bear referred to it as a mystery box. That gets me really excited, and I can't wait to dive into it. Now, going back to the Season 7 stuff, the seasonal event, I think, is going to be the return of SRL. That's the Sparrow Racing League from Destiny 1. It would be a really nice change of pace if you're doing all of this puzzle solving and raiding. You can kick back and just do some racing. Now, if they bring it back, I hope they evolve it a little bit, maybe feature like item pickups or something. That would be pretty awesome. But of course, that's probably just a far off fantasy. But anyways, I think that brings us to the end of the annual pass update. Now, as far as things like the tetrahedron ships from the post credits scene in the vanilla campaign, I don't think that's going to be anytime soon. I really do believe that is going to be Destiny 3. If anything, if we do get a second major expansion to the size of like Rise of Iron, I think that's going to be where we're going to be running into Savathun, unless we do run into her in for Taken. I'm not really sure how that's going to play out. But regardless, I don't think those ships are going to be inside of an expansion. The Traveler's Ancient Enemy deserves an entire release, so I think we'll be getting that in Destiny 3 or maybe even Destiny 4. But anyways, let me know what you think of the annual pass. Do you think all of this is worth the $30 price point? I definitely do. I know they've made a lot of promises before, but I really do have to say, you know, I've been following Destiny ever since before it was even called Destiny, and I've never seen an offering for an entire year of content as rich and as promising as what we've been saying over the past few months. So, you know, I have a lot of high hopes. I'm, of course, cautiously optimistic, as you should be as well, but I think it's okay to be responsibly hyped. Anyways, let me know what you think down below. Thanks for watching, happy gaming, and I will see you all next time.